The Sahel Nations, under the leadership of Presidents Ibrahim Traoré, Asimi Goita, and General Tiani, have just shocked the world by declaring the end of IMF control over their economies forever. With the alliance of Sahel states boldly unveiling plans to establish their own investment bank and stabilization fund, this could be the game-changing financial revolution that Africa has been waiting for. Could this be the final nail in the coffin for IMF dominance in Africa? Let's dive in and explore how the Sahel is rewriting the rules of global finance. The alliance of Sahel states emerged in response to growing instability and a shared vision of self-reliance in West Africa. Formed in 2023 by Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger, the alliance aimed to enhance security cooperation, strengthen economic ties, and forge a path toward greater independence from external powers. Led by revolutionary figures such as Presidents Ibrahim Traoré of Burkina Faso, Asimi Goita of Mali, and General Tiani of Niger, these leaders saw the writing on the wall. The region could no longer rely on foreign aid or Western financial institutions for growth. Instead, they sought a bold alternative to control their own destinies, both militarily and economically. But it wasn't all smooth sailing. The alliance of Sahel states faced external pressure, economic sanctions, and the ongoing threat of insurgencies. Yet, through perseverance and unity, they have remained resilient, and today, they are taking an even bolder step towards independence. How do you think the international community will react to this daring move? The announcement that the Alliance of Sahel States is establishing its own investment bank and stabilization fund has sent shockwaves throughout the financial world. These institutions are designed to finance infrastructure projects, stabilize economies during crises, and foster economic growth without the need for external intervention from institutions like the IMF or World Bank. The investment bank will likely be funded through contributions from Alliance of Sahel States member states, regional taxation, and investment returns, while the stabilization fund will act as a financial buffer, offering emergency loans during times of economic instability. Comparing this to the World Bank and IMF, which have long imposed stringent conditions on borrowing nations, the Alliance of Sahel State's financial model seems revolutionary. Instead of conditional loans tied to austerity, the new institutions will offer flexible terms tailored to the region's needs. Could this model be a better fit for African economies, especially given the IMF's track record of imposing policies that sometimes cripple local industries? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Before we continue, just a gentle reminder to like and share our videos also, subscribe to the channel to stay informed on the latest African economic, political, and social developments, and explore how global geopolitics impact the continent. For decades, countries in the Sahel region have been caught in the financial web spun by the IMF and World Bank. These institutions have historically provided loans to struggling economies, but always with strings attached, strings that often left these nations more indebted than before. The IMF's Structural Adjustment Programs, SAPs, for example, forced governments to cut public spending, privatize essential services, and reduce subsidies, all of which had devastating impacts on local economies and populations. However, the Alliance of Sahel States is determined to break free from these financial chains. By creating their own financial institutions, the Sahel nations aim to bypass these traditional lenders offering themselves greater flexibility and autonomy. But can the Alliance of Sahel States really pull it off? What challenges do you think they might face in building this independent financial system from scratch? Drop your thoughts in the comments. The Alliance of Sahel States has an ambitious economic vision that goes far beyond just establishing financial institutions. There is talk of a regional economic and monetary union potentially even a new currency that could be backed by the region's abundant natural resources like gold, uranium, and oil. Such a currency would provide an alternative to the CFA franc, which has been historically linked to French monetary policy, symbolizing another step toward true economic independence. This vision also includes deeper regional economic integration, where borders between member states are more fluid, allowing for the freer movement of goods, services, 
and people. With the investment bank spearheading the financing of cross-border infrastructure projects, the alliance of Sahel states could significantly boost trade within the region, reducing reliance on foreign imports. But is the world ready for a financially independent Sahel with its own currency and banking system? Could this be the blueprint for other African regions? Comment below with your thoughts on whether the Alliance of Sahel States model could spread across the continent. One of the most compelling aspects of the Alliance of Sahel States strategy is how they plan to use their vast natural resource wealth to fuel development. The Sahel is rich in valuable resources like gold, uranium, and oil. Resources that have historically been extracted by foreign companies with little benefit to the local economies. But under this new financial framework, the Alliance of Sahel States aims to retain more control over these resources, using them as collateral for loans and investments. This resource-backed development strategy could provide a sustainable funding source for critical projects in infrastructure, education, and healthcare. Yet it's not without its challenges. Extractive industries have been fraught with corruption, mismanagement, and environmental degradation. Do you think the Alliance of Sahel States can implement the necessary safeguards to ensure that resource wealth benefits the people and not just the elite? Share your thoughts. The Alliance of Sahel States has already outlined key areas of focus for their development projects, with energy, transportation, and telecommunications taking center stage. By investing in energy, the Sahel can unlock vast potential in solar and wind power, while transportation infrastructure could transform regional connectivity, making it easier for goods and people to move across borders. Telecommunications are crucial for modernizing economies and linking rural areas to urban markets. These infrastructure projects are expected to create thousands of jobs, boosting economic growth and stabilizing the region. Could the Alliance of Sahel States Investment Bank become the driving force behind a new era of Sahelian prosperity? Will this create more opportunities for youth in a region plagued by unemployment? Let's hear your thoughts. Perhaps the most profound shift in the Alliance of Sahel States' financial revolution is the move toward full financial sovereignty and self-reliance. By reducing dependence on external financial institutions, the Sahel states are betting on their ability to manage their own economies, build local financial expertise, and sustain their growth without foreign interference. The Treasury Deposit Bank, already set up in Burkina Faso, serves as a model for these ambitions. This bank, designed to safeguard state revenues and invest in local projects, is another step toward full financial autonomy. The Alliance of Sahel States Investment Bank could follow a similar path, offering loans and investments that prioritize local development over foreign profit. Will this lead to long-term sustainability for the region? What are your predictions? The creation of Alliance of Sahel States financial institutions will undoubtedly send ripples across West Africa and beyond. With the Sahel region positioning itself as financially independent, neighboring countries could be inspired to follow suit. This could lead to a shift in the balance of power within Africa, as more regions adopt similar models. On the global stage, institutions like the IMF and World Bank might view the alliance of Sahel states move as a direct challenge to their influence in Africa. Could we be witnessing the beginning of a new financial order where African nations set the rules? What do you think the global reaction will be? Will the West push back, or will they respect the Sahel's newfound sovereignty? Despite its bold vision, the Alliance of Sahel States will undoubtedly face significant challenges in implementing these financial institutions. Critics will question whether these nations, already dealing with conflicts, have the capacity to run such complex financial systems effectively. There may be concerns about governance, transparency, and the risk of corruption, issues that have plagued similar initiatives in the past. However, the Alliance of Sahel States leadership has been vocal about their commitment to accountability. Presidents Traore, Goita, and General Tiani have all emphasized the need for transparency in managing the region's financial future. But will these promises be enough to quell skepticism? What measures do you think the Alliance of Sahel States should implement 
to ensure the success of their financial revolution. Share your ideas. As the Alliance of Sahel States moves forward with its plans to establish the Investment Bank and Stabilization Fund, all eyes will be on how these institutions develop. There is potential for expansion, with other West African nations expressing interest in joining the Alliance or collaborating on joint projects. The long-term vision for the Sahel is clear. A region that is economically independent, politically stable, and able to provide prosperity for its people without relying on external powers. Could this be the model for a new, self-reliant Africa? What will the future hold for the Alliance of Sahel States and its financial institutions? Stay tuned as the region takes bold steps towards its financial independence. The Alliance of Sahel States is on the verge of a financial transformation that could redefine not just their region, but the future of Africa as a whole. With their new investment bank and stabilization fund, the Sahel is taking control of its destiny, breaking free from the shackles of IMF and World Bank dependency. Will this move inspire other African nations to follow suit, leading to true economic sovereignty across the continent? Only time will tell, but one thing is for sure. The world is watching, and the Sahel is ready to lead. What do you think? Is this the dawn of a new financial era for Africa? Leave your comments below. As always, I appreciate you tuning in and letting me break down these complex geopolitical topics. Let me know what you think about the issues down in the comments below. Looking forward to that discussion. Please like this video, share it, subscribe to our channel, and we will see you in our next video.